Go. Silence for about 10 seconds. Okay, um, let's just start talking from the beginning. Um, oh, yeah. You moved here from Georgia. Your father came first. Why did your father want to move up here to Detroit? My father moved to Detroit because I guess he was an ambitious person, wanted a better life. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, Ford uh, uh, had become uh, well known across the country, hiring blacks. And uh, he, he, this is why uh, he came up north. And that was, that was obviously a great out migration from the south during those years, anyhow. Uh, what'd your father do at Ford? My father uh, clearly uh, went into Ford's as a laborer, but uh, he became a foreman at Ford's, which, and that was uh, something that's generally unheard heard of. And of course, you got to know uh, the fact that at the Ford Rouge plant there, though Ford had many plants across the country, uh, this was one plant where he had fairly well fair employment practices a half a century almost before the, the word was even coined. So he became a foreman. He was a foreman over uh, whites as well as blacks. Uh, department N605, I'll never forget it. So salvage department. Mm -hmm. If I went there during that time, what would the crew look like? What... You know, it was kind of a international uh, na nations. I mean, you know, a family of nations. We had Arabs, and uh, you had uh, whites from the South, you had Poles, Italians. And this is, the, this is what they call the old production foundry. And uh, 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 mostly... Those were the folks that mostly made up the family, blacks and, and the foreign-born. They were largely foreign-borns. Mm -hmm. And were there a lot of, were there any racial tensions on the line having a, a black foreman? Well, you, that was in the days before the Union, and uh, Henry Ford ruled that plant with iron hand. Uh, you accepted the conditions that existed in the plant, you, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, there you, wasn't was any such thing as democratic industrialism, you know, industrial democracy. You know, no, 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 no. You, 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 if you gripe about anything, you were on the streets, uh, which, which proves that people can get along if, uh, you know, uh, they don't have another alternative. Great. Um, tell me about um, how your father felt about working at Ford. My father really cherished his job at Ford's. Um, he was one of few, uh, clearly, of blacks in, the, in Detroit who had uh, a supervisory job and, and plants. And Ford's was a kind of premier plant as far as blacks were concerned. Uh, and it, it, it held over it with him and, until when, even when the union came, he and I felt that we, we had a divorce. I had to leave the house because as for the union, he... Ford Motor Company was a bridge that carried us over safely, and I'm sticking with Ford's. So he was very proud of his job. Uh, he uh, took it very seriously, and uh, I, uh, I admired him because uh, that was where he saw the basis for his uh, success in life, and uh, really enlarged some other blacks. Um, there were other black foremen, Starman. Oh yeah, the Starman by Mr. Price. Uh, never will forget him. He. A star man in Ford's, I guess, uh, he would almost be a kind of a superintendent because they had journal forms and all that sort of thing. Uh, he was way up the hierarchy there as far as uh, 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 the manage management side. And he actually had a little star on his badge, you know, bad, bad something like the other fellows, but he had a star on his. And they're highly respected, Mr. Price, yeah. And uh, you had uh, others, you know, with some, there wasn't a great amount of them. Uh, but uh, again, uh, that was a kind of anomaly. Uh, even the skilled, the, even the trades, the skilled trades, the apprenticeship programs. Ford had his own trade school, and uh, long before I went out there, blacks, you know, became tool and dive men, and you know, electricians and what have you. But but back to your original question, the matter of the the my dad really uh, felt a great sense of loyalty to the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Ford, as you say. Did he ever talk to you about Ford at home or about his job? And well, uh, that was often, uh, you know, among the men who worked at Ford's uh, or who worked at Chrysler's or you know what have you. They talk about their jobs. 
Uh, I guess back in those days, uh, with all the repression and other things that confronted blacks, it wasn't too much that you had to talk about in which you could talk with a great deal of pride and pleasure. Uh, but uh, he would uh, come home and he would recount some of his experiences during the day at, around the dinner table, yes. Mm -hmm. And again, I say, and this is all out of his pride of uh, having, you know, succeeded. Do you know how your father got the job at Ford? If he got it through his church or how he got it? Uh, my dad, uh, he just went out there and they were hiring uh, and he got a job. Now, the Later on, later on at Ford's, uh, I guess Ford somehow always had a sense, uh, you know, that one day the union was going to be there, as they did from time to time. And uh, the old man was pretty smart. Uh, he began to establish contact with the churches in the various ethnic communities, the Poles and what have you, and he, he really balkanized the plan. That's why the union had such a difficulty, and that's why my dad was so loyal to it. Uh, but my dad, my dad's going to force annotated uh, this uh, increasing fears that Henry Ford had about the unions, and when he well, once that began, he began to really establish all kinds of linkages in the community. You know, you certain ministers like Reverend Bradby could give you a card and that sort of thing here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. If I went to say the first A and E or um, the uh, some of the black churches in Detroit at that mm -hmm. time and saw Ford workers there, what would it be like? Well, uh, as I indicated in the outset, uh, there was a real sense of pride to get having a job at Ford's. Uh, they, and they not only wore them to church, sometimes wore the church with the badges, but they'd wear it in the streets. And, uh, you know, really, it, 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 they found out it influenced a lot of ladies. You know what I mean? So... It was a it was a kind of a, 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 a badge of distinction, so to speak, to them. You know, yeah, they uh, that that was a great uh, a sense of pride in having a job at Ford's back in those days. Great. Um, did your father ever meet Henry Ford? Do you know? I don't know that my fourth father did. Now he never told me that. I don't know that my father did. Uh, uh, Meet Mr. Ford. Uh, you know, I wasn't in the plant at that time. I don't know how, how, how frequently he, he, he uh, Mr. Ford came through the plant, uh, but he certainly acted like he did with his, the great admiration he had for Mr. Ford. Um, what was life like for you and your family during the Depression? Well, uh, I guess I was one of the fortunate ones. Uh, my dad worked most of the Depression. And uh, the, about the only only uh, memory I can have of, of anything even remotely uh, connected with uh, any kind of assistance was, I guess, uh, back uh, the days of W. They had flour; you could get flour, that sort of thing. But but my dad worked mostly through the through the depression, and my mother, as they call it back in those days, did day work. And so uh, we managed. We managed to come through the uh, the depression uh, uh, pretty well unscathed. Did your father ever get laid off? That's what. That's what. But in other words, what I'm saying is that that he worked most of the time. And he he may have been off, uh, but very few days. Yeah, he he worked uh, practically through right through the depression. Mm -hmm. What was your neighborhood like? Well, again, I was fortunate. My dad was able to live in a in a in a in a, in a first class neighborhood. Uh, we didn't use the term that much back in those days. Middle class. I know we lived on Beagle back in the twenty eighth and whatever. I know we're on Stanford. I, well, it was all nice. Well, I lived on the west side of Detroit. Of course, the west side of Detroit back in those days was was a premier black community in Detroit. Uh, black here, obviously, you know. Per capita wise, they're in the highest uh, wages anywhere in, this, in, in, in the country. And it would reflect. This is take two, Sheffield, 104115, time code in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. 
Oh, you ready? Yeah. yeah Just, oh, ready. oh, okay. Yeah, I, I grew up on the west side, as I indicated. My dad uh, was able to afford uh, to live in, uh, in a nice neighborhood. Uh, and that was in the early days of uh, the beginning of the burgeoning, what became a burgeoning black community. Uh, and surprisingly, black entrepreneurship really uh, was flourishing back in those days. Uh, blacks here earned the high, had the highest per capita earnings that, by being in the auto industry. And we had up and down Milford Avenue. Uh, we had all kinds of black businesses, uh, Hawkins drugstores and what have you. And we even had, uh, and citywide, we even had uh, a, a, a Supreme Linen Supply, Old Gov's Coffee. I mean, things we don't even have today. And, uh, you know, and as much as we decry, uh, you know, some of the things we faced, there were these kind of islands, you know what I mean, uh, that uh, just contradicted uh, what, the, what those who, in retrospect, uh, you know, think of as uh, some of the worst days. But uh, uh, I went to a good school, uh, Samson School, Winter School. I started there at Samson in 1921, and uh, uh, it was all white. Uh, there's a Jewish community over them in my neighborhood. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I got a little older, I used to go in and turn the lights on. I got a dime way back in those days to turn the lights on. And uh, I guess they, they had kosher. Roll 30, sound roll 18. Time code in is 10.45. You rolling? 10.45. The, the community in which we lived on the west side was, you know, blacks were always a minority, but it was very mixed. We had a good-sized Jewish community, and... and uh, uh, there was a rabbi in a synagogue at Beagle and Milford there, and uh, the rabbi, uh, I'd go and do things for him on special days, turn lights on and help him as whatever he prepared the chickens. Everything I did, he'd give me a dime. And, uh, you know, back in those days, uh, you're talking about 65 some years ago, a dime was a whole lot of money. And I just had great affection for this rabbi. But I also, you know, we, we had uh, built really good friendships with a number of the other Jewish families, Jewish kids in the area. Uh, it was a good school, Samson School, where I first went. It was a good school, Winged School, and and I guess on the whole, uh, with all the other all the other uh, uh, disturbing problems that black folks had, uh, we in that community really had a fairly good life. Good life, you know, uh, relatively speaking, uh, considering all the other things. And let me ask you: Do you remember what you could have, what you could buy for a dime? Well, let me tell you, for one thing, a hot dog today costs you a dollar, and I can get a hot dog and, 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 and a bottle of pop for a dime, at least, as I can recall. Uh, it'd buy you a whole lot of things, a lot of things. Or you get a shoe shine for a dime, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, at that age, though, I mean, my, I was more into going to Ari Baker's and getting jelly rolls and things like that. See, I'd, I had not learned how I could, should have conserved some of that money. Bank, bank some of it, okay? <laughs> Speaking of banks, do you remember the crash of 1929? I remember it so well. I remember it so well uh, because in a couple of years later, I began to get active. Yes, I can remember the crash of 1929. I can I can remember seeing uh, with a couple of years uh, people being put out of the streets. I mean, you're just walking up and down any street, and you you know around you can see being, people being put out. And I can also begin to see the turbulence that began to grow in the community. Uh, people become restive. They take and put this, put the clothes, put the people's furniture back in the house, and and they clash it with police, and people are marching and all that. Yes, I remember very well, very very well. I, that left a very lasting impression on me. Yeah. Did uh, Did anyone in your neighborhood ever get uh, put out? There, there were very few. I, there was there. I can remember seeing some. I can remember seeing some, but if, on the whole. There weren't, it wasn't nearly as bad as I was, saw as it was in some neighborhoods, in some neighborhoods. But uh, where, they, where, they, where they were, uh, there were people demonstrated and what have you about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, getting to the Ford Hunger March of 32, yeah. do you, did your father ever talk to you about that, do you remember? Well, see, at that, by that time, I, look, I was 16 years old then. And, and I, was, I was an activist by that time. I had become an activist then for about four or five years. And so I was aware of it. Now, you know, it was all in, all in the papers. Now, I didn't go out. Let me, 
stop you and let's start that again. But if you could say that you remember the Fort Hunger March. No, yeah, okay, all right, okay, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I can remember the Fort Hunger March because I was 16 years old and I had become active. I had become active. We'd organize a little group on the west side then. Uh, I've always been organized called the BBB, the Bad Black Boys. And see, and to use the term black back in that those days, man, that was a no no. And that was just gave some sense. Of our sense of outrage about discrimination. And we, uh, we organized things to, you know, uh, get blacks jobs at stores and that sort of thing. But yes, to the hunger march, I remember because people got killed in it. You, you know, you saw pictures of people being beaten. I remember it very well. And of course, my dad was out there. He, you know, he talked about it too. What did he say about it? Well, my, my, you know, my, my dad, as I recall, uh, you know, he, 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 did, did, he really wasn't that sharp in terms of political ideologies and all that sort of thing. Uh, it clearly had a, a heavy communist leadership. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I, I see the communists did a whole lot of good things back in those days. Uh, but again, uh, he was pro Ford. And that was his frame of reference for anything that can't happen that had any relationship whatsoever to Ford Motor Company. See, he was pro Ford. That, Mr. Ford had provided the bridge that carried us over safe and that he was sticking with his Ford. So, yeah. Were you at the Hunger March? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I didn't get out of the Hunger March. See, uh, that was near Durban, and Durban, Durban by that time, had become a, a really a no-no as far as Blacks are concerned. No, I, 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 mm. okay. um, Did you, by any chance, have a picture of Ford in your home? Did your father have a picture of Ford in your home? No, he never reached that point, and uh, perhaps it's only because not one wasn't available. <laughs> yeah, because he surely would have had it if it was. He, you know, he ran right along with, and later he, he went along with uh, Dr. King, because he saw Mr. Ford as kind of savior. Okay. Well, let me cut for a second. Ten fifty-two twenty. Okay, so let's talk about things that fears that your parents uh. might have had. Well, my dad and and he, in particular my mother. Uh, we're very conscious of uh, the plight that black people were in. We call ourselves colored folks back in those days. Colored people were in. Uh, and they played a very active role in the community. Uh, my dad, uh, the old West Side uh, Community Relations Committee and that sort of thing, uh, they were concerned about the schools, about blacks uh, being in the schools, teachers and that sort of thing. And we held those kind of discussions. I guess much of my, my uh, uh, commitment to this whole struggle uh, had its genesis there, you know. Uh, back in those days, uh, you know, you'd pick up a black newspaper, the People's News, or one of them, and uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, strange to see what a black being lynched and that sort of thing. And I guess that was typical of of the average black family. These were major concerns back in those days. Uh, while my dad didn't never encounter any police brutality. Uh, but it was certainly uh, an issue then. I mean, back in those days, uh, they, they imported whites from the South because they thought they could deal with black folks. Uh, and, and, and much of the harshness, uh, much of the animus that developed between blacks and the police had its genesis back in those days. Now, those are the things that occupied their mind. Uh, they were certainly concerned about maintaining, uh, you know, uh, aesthetically the, the, the neighborhoods and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, uh, by and large, uh, my dad was a great church person. Uh, he went to church dutifully on Sunday and several times during the week. And my mother belonged to the uh, uh, Pastors' Aid Society. And so uh, very stable people. Uh, but uh, they certainly shared uh, the common fears that all blacks had about being second-class citizens. Now, even though there, there, there was the contradiction of their being back in those middle-class uh, black folks. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the badges and go back to uh, uh, wearing them on Sunday and how people would do that. Well, Ford, as a place of employment, uh, was 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 certainly sought after by blacks. I mean, uh, there's just no question about it. Uh, Chrysler and General Motors and blacks, but but somehow. Uh, Fours just carried out a magic name. And they liked that badge. They were proud of the fact they worked there. Uh, they would wear it at church. And, of course, uh, they also knew that uh, it attracted the ladies, too. I mean, 
fellow with a badge on uh, might, you know, he might get off of date two or three times, you know. So uh, it, it had that effect. But again, I think uh, fundamentally, fundamentally, uh, it was just a sense of pride of having a job at Ford's. Ford paid well, and of course now many of them suffered the vicissitudes that went along back in those days. Uh, Mala changed over, this, that, and other, and uh, you know, uh, no seniority being out, out, out in the streets quite often. But when they got the badge back, it was still they'd put it on and they'd wear it to church because number one, it it. it Okay, so let's go back to the badge being an entree into a better life. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, well, the, 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 I guess you have to realize in those days uh, that blacks, even you were a PhD, you know, you didn't have access to the better jobs. Many of them worked in foundries and worked in the plants. Uh, Ford was the premier place to work. And so fellows had a sense of pride. They had a sense of pride in it to the extent that many of them would wear the badge to church. And of course, out in, as far as in the community, uh, they wear the badge and, uh, it, you know, it's kind of a magnet to the, for the ladies. And, and just, I guess, it, 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 in summary, it really, it was a kind of a pass key uh, to, you know, the good things in life in the community. I mean, you were invited to this and that. You were almost a kind of a celebrity sense. If I had a celebrity, yeah, if you worked, uh, you, you worked at Ford's. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, going back a little bit to when you were 16, around the Hunger March time, yeah. you said that's when you started becoming active. Um, was there friction between you and your father, or what, how was that working? Well, no, no my, my dad and I never had a problem in that respect until we, we tried to organize Ford some years later. Uh, but uh, uh, clearly, I was on the side of the of the hunger, hunger marches, and my dad wasn't. Uh, but I, and that's because I said three or four years, we began to get active, we began to form organizations, and, and uh, uh, we, uh, our consciousness, our awareness of the social struggle, obviously, uh, you know, uh, became much greater, expanded. And I, 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 from early on, I identified uh, with the workers out there. And I just, somehow, I don't know, it just came about. But I had began to become exposed as in high school then to, uh, you know, some Marxist group, yes, and some socialist groups. And uh, that began to form, uh, really caused me to begin to form some beliefs of my own. And uh, my dad just felt that really I ought to share his beliefs. And, and uh, I, I had to do it until I was about 18. I said, now, Dad, I got my own. <laughs> but I had my own then, but didn't tell him, you know. <laughs> Father believed that Henry Ford was um, the friend to the colored folk. Unquestionably, my dad had a very high regard for Henry Ford, and uh, you know you got to take it within the context of that time. Uh, he thought Ford, and, and, no, and no question. I mean, look, I, I've, I've been a union man all my life, uh, and you, when you cut aside all the things, the anti-union things they did, uh, you know, I went to college by working at Ford's. Uh, many as true of many other blacks, uh, and 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 Ford, Henry Ford, Henry Ford uh, by opening his doors, really uh, in a country where a wage is the most important thing, he provided wages, and when others didn't, and that's why my dad felt so strong about Henry Ford. He became a foreman out there, and that, and that was back in the uh, back in the early 30s, 20s, you know, late 20s and 30s, and so to him that meant something. You know, and then he was a foreman for years after the union got in. So to him, uh, he just equated that with with uh, uh, someone who kind of savior of black folks. And 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 I don't argue with it because I was there and I know know uh, I, what had happened at that time. I know what it meant for black to hires and others not. It made the difference. It made the difference that I was I could live in a decent home. I had decent clothes. I went to school, at good school, so I know what it meant. And 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 uh, and unfortunately, uh, some of the two men have got to revisit those times now. But I mean, that's what it was. That's what, and that's why he came out to where he was, to the position he did. You sure, you don't want to sing one of those songs for us? 
Yeah. One of those songs. Yeah. Okay. One of those songs. Yeah, do you remember an old song? Okay, cut. I'll just add, this is another dimension of, of, of it. Okay. Anytime. Okay, we're ready. Um, there's one thing, though. Um, if you worked at Ford's, there was a regimen you knew you had to follow if you wanted to work there. Uh, you didn't find people out in the streets openly singing the anti-derogatory Ford, Henry Ford songs. Now, that came after the union got in. Uh, and anybody who tells you that they did Believe me, I mean, you know, they just been eating too many lotus leaves because that just didn't happen. Uh, and really, you know, retribution from Ford's side was swift and effective. You didn't have a job. Uh, and I said that even notwithstanding the things that I, the positive things about Ford, but, uh, you know, you, you, you bought a car. See, if you didn't buy a Ford car, uh, you you had problems. And, and uh, you know, um, um, Look, uh, sometimes it extended into your own personal life, see? And I, because I know people that it did, that, that it did, and of course, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the NLRB thing that came later proved that. But uh, again, I would still say that, that uh, there was many good things that accrued not only to black folks, but to, but to the immigrants, the, the, the people who came over and, I, and it, uh, who came from Italy and all these other places, uh, who will look down on also. They, they got jobs at Ford's. Mm -hmm. Great. 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 Take 7, 11, 08. Okay. This badge was a badge of distinction uh, back uh, in those days, 60s, 70 years ago. Uh, you know, it might even get you a deaconship in a church. Uh, it might, might even get you a beautiful lady. Uh, fellows wore this uh, with great pride, uh, openly. And uh, look, uh, you know, if you uh, got out alive with it, you might have a little problem messing with that badge. <laughs> Time code in 11.10. Take it out. Take it out. Uh, this badge here was really a badge of distinction back in those days. The, uh, even in the church, they wore it to church. Uh, you got respect from the minister. And you wore it in the streets, you got respect from the ladies. And so uh, fellows cherished it. And uh, it got you into places that you otherwise would not have gotten in. Uh, it was a kind of a badge of honor. And uh, as uh, I, I uh, indicated, why uh, people, many people, looked at Mr. Ford as a great uh, savior of black folks. But quite a number of them didn't. But his badge spoke for itself. Wearing this badge spoke for itself. This will be a uh, room tone for Sheffield interview, and we're rolling. End the tone. 